Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this brain dart build. Now, last video we put all the electronics in so everything is connected and we're ready to go. The only change that I've made between that video and this one is I've resorted to cutting in a little slot at the side to connect the USB cable to the Radix Li flight controller. The reason for that is with even with the flight controller at the side as I've mounted it here, which should still perform fine for flying, the connection to the USB cable was a little bit tight and it was putting strain on the cable and also the USB connector on the flight controller, which is never a good idea. So I cut this little hole out the side, 3D printed little cover and we're all set. Now, this video is going to be all about setting up iNav. Now, this isn't specific to the LI. All the steps I'm going to go through here, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, will feel very familiar indeed. This is how I set up all my iNav wings, and they all work fine. It is all documented in the iNav wiki, and there is a problem that if you miss any of these steps, you can get yourself into a bit of a problem where when you put it into some kind of stabilized mode, it'll spiral into the ground. But if you follow along with this with your iNav build, even if it isn't a Radix system from Brain FPV and this little dart, then you should get to the other end and it'll work fine. Now, the first thing we need to do is to go through this little list here. These are the iNav basics that I do before I install the battery. Now, we did some of the basic configuration last time where we did the accelerometer calibration, but that was about it. So let me plug in the Radix. And then we're going to connect and we'll have a look around. Let me show you what I've done and go through here. First thing we need to do is lift the nose up on the model and make sure that the nose is lifting in the graphic here. If it is, then we're good. If we're not, then we're going to have to change the board alignment and you've installed the flight controller at, uh, at the wrong angle. Now, the fact that it's setting sitting here on the desk and it isn't reading as completely flat we'll take steps at the end to sort it out now i've already gone through some of these steps next thing we need to do is configure the ports uh, if you remember we kind of did the calibration and we did the mixer uh, when the board was outside of the model so that's all done outputs we don't need to worry about yet apart from the fact this is where we're going to come at the very end and turn the outputs on uh, because we're going to need to check that everything's working properly we went through the presets if you remember we chose a 600 millimeter flying wing still going to have to auto tune it but it'll be close next thing to do then is ports and as you can see here all i'm doing is i'm just running down this list ports is the next thing a couple of things we need to configure up in here uart1 needs to be on the radix li configured for smart audio because it's tx1 that we have connected to uh, you can actually see that screen printed on the board we've also set up uart4 as gps by default i've left it at 11 uh, 5200 that's the board rate uh, if i'm getting problems with the gps i'll drop it down to 57600 but we'll keep it at uh, full speed for the moment and the only other thing to think about then is on UART3, that's set for serial receiver. That is the one that would be normally connected to SBUS, or this time it's CRSF. If you ever go and save and reboot, and the things you've set up in here don't stick like this, then that probably means you've selected an invalid configuration for your ports. So you've done something wrong, so you need to go back and double check. Configuration is the next tab. Um, all I would recommend in here, I wouldn't change anything yet. I would turn on the battery and, and uh, current sensors so that we have those in the on-screen display. Um, but the big thing we're going to change in here is make sure that the type of serial-based receiver that we have is set for TBS Crossfire. Now, this was actually auto-detected by iNav here, which was pretty impressive. Uh, the other thing we can do is now we've set the GPS stuff up, we can turn the GPS on, leave everything else as default, and hit save and reboot. You should then find that the GPS will appear after several seconds of it trying to initialize the GPS as a red GPS, and that's fine because the GPS isn't powered, but the receiver is. The only thing I potentially would do is turn on telemetry output because we're using CRSF, or if you were using something like SmartPort telemetry for a FreeSky sensor, that would then send information down to the radio. So that's probably about as much as I do here. Then the next thing we need to do is check the failsafe. I would set it as uh, return to home. I'd always double check that that's what it's set. By default, it's probably set something like drop. We're in a plane here, so we'll check for return to home. Again, save and reboot. PID tuning, don't worry about that. The next thing we need to do is come into the receiver. Now, at the moment, that little red parachute at the top means we're in failsafe mode. Now, the cool thing about the Radix is it powers the receiver. So if I turn on the radio and is going to connect, 
Here Normal we go. Mode, then we come out of failsafe mode. Now that's good because it also proves that it figured out that failsafe had happened when the connection was lost and I can move the controls. Now in here, we want to move things like the throttle, make sure it's the throttle moving, move the rudder, make sure it's the yaw control that's moving. If it's not, then change your channel map. It's probably gonna be default uh, as you come in here. I always need it on Spectrum because that's just the way my radio is set up. The other thing you need to do is move your sticks to the top right hand corner and all the channel values should go to their maximum. In the bottom left hand corner, they go to the minimum. If you've got it set like that, then the radio is good. You don't change anything else on the radio. Everything else that needs to be changed is gonna be on the flight controller. You need a three position switch. And I would also choose an arming switch as well. And then you're gonna set everything up as normal. Uh, make sure the other thing is that the middle channel values are exactly 1500 um, for the main controls for roll, pitch and yaw. If they're not, then what the flight controller is going to think you're telling it is that you want to fly in a particular direction. All that stuff is kind of talked about up here. Next thing to do is set your modes. I would set a couple of modes in here. I potentially would set the low mode position to be something like uh, manual, angle, and then something else. So I'm actually going to just change things around. So I'm going to actually have angle there save that and I would also recommend having a manual mode now manual allows you to take control of the craft if something horrible happens or when you come to fly so now if I save it whoop, there we go we're in manual mode in the middle position I've got angle or horizon mode and then in the top position I've actually got a nav position hold the reason for that is that what I want to be able to do is just test the GPS stuff all I would recommend is for the initial stuff, set up manual and angle mode, and those are the two that we're going to need in order to do the pre-flight checks and do the very first test flight. Now, the only other thing you could potentially do is, once you've saved all that, go into your on-screen display and uh, move things around. Now, the way it works with the Radix, it's a very different layout, so we're probably going to have to tweak these things, but you'll have your own particular way of doing that. Now at this point, we are in really good shape. We can actually unplug it and then get ready to plug the system in for the first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into outputs, beg your pardon, and we're gonna turn on configuration. That means next time we power it up and plug in a battery, uh, everything is going to be live and we're gonna need that for the next bit. There are some last couple of things we can do in here before we actually go and test it on the bench. Uh, we need to make sure, of course, that we have the current and voltage monitoring set in here. Uh, that way it's gonna work. Uh, on with the Radix, we need to set it for 500. So that is where it needs to be. Always check with the flight controller you've got what these particular different scales need to be so it reads properly. Uh, we turned on telemetry. You know what, we'll also turn on uh, launch mode for fixed wing that allows us to throw it into the air and for it to go into uh, into flight without us having to select that as a mode. That's quite a nice thing to do. Hit save and reboot. Uh, obviously, we've done the on-screen display already, but the last thing that I would do is in the manual, it talks about a specific set of things that you need to set up. I'm not going to go through what all they all do. Check out the iNav wiki that kind of explains it but these are the settings that we need now you can actually set see what they're set to already um so for example if we do that and get rid of the number then we see at the moment it's 300 that means 30 degrees that's nowhere near enough so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select all this Control c to copy it Control v to paste and there we go we're going to hit save and that is all the extra things done. Now that will give us a much more aggressive bank angle when we're in stabilization and angle mode, which I think you need. Also allow you to arm in any orientation. Uh, the fail safe procedure is returned to home. INAV reset home and extra safeties are all turned on. So now we're ready to go into the bench and test everything and test the servos are moving in the right direction. If they're not, then we're gonna change them in here, not on the radio. So let's go and do that next. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the magic smoke isn't going to escape from everything. So I'm going to have my resistance 
option set on the multimeter and i'm just going to see what it is across the pins of the xt60 it should climb quickly which it is that means it is perfect that's what we want to see so i haven't done anything stupid visual inspection of all your wiring before you plug everything in uh, just to make sure you haven't done anything daft and remove the prop because we are going to plug in the battery now this is genuinely the first time plugging it in uh, make sure that we are in manual mode have your radio turned on your prop is turned off be ready to unplug it at the moment you start to smell something getting a bit warm but we should be fine because we've done those pre-checks so let's plug it in and see what happens that looks very promising nothing's exploded and in the on-screen display, I can see that's all burst into life. So the camera's working, the flight controller's working, everything is good. So the next thing we need to do then, in manual mode, I need to move the controls and check that each of the servos is in the right direction. Now, the one on the right seems to be working absolutely fine. The one on the left, however, is reversed. When I uh, move the controls, do a high five check, unfortunately it's wrong. So we need to jump into iNav and change it. So in the bottom right hand corner, just needed to flick that switch. Once that's done, coming back and checking it again, we should find that it's absolutely spot on. So both of them are working in the right direction. So that is all good. Last thing we need to do then is to check that the correction is right too. So we're going to pop the control into an angle mode this is why we have angle and then we're going to move the model and we're going to check the control surfaces are moving to counteract the uncommanded movement which they are so we're great so the last thing we need to do then is to tell iNav what level flight should feel like uh, this wing like most of them is going to need to be slightly nose up so i've just put some stuff under the nose and then we come into the main setup page here and we can look at what it thinks it's got so we can see here that it's uh, 5.1 degrees out so because we know that we can go into configuration go into uh, the board alignment and change the pitch angle to be 5.1 to match what it's reading on the desk this might not be spot on we might have to tweak this when we do our test flight um, we want to test it at cruise throttle and then when we reboot it and come back in we should find that it reads zero and zero and going to set up it does there we know so when it's flying, iNav will think that is straight and level. That slightly nose attitude will work perfectly. So that's iNav all set up. The last thing I would do is just leave it sat with the GPS with a full view of the sky for a little bit. Uh, it might take anything up to five to eight minutes to get its first lock, depending on how quickly the GPS locks up. Make sure that you can lock it, make sure you can arm it, and then join me next time at the field where I'll maiden this one and we'll check that everything works. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.